आसान है आप कि उसने पाकिस्तान मुस्लिम लीग नून को एक दफा फिर मौका दिया है अल्लाह ताला हमें तोफीक दे एक एक वादा पूरा करेंगे Hello and welcome to the last word. Is Nawaz Sharif's comfortable victory in Pakistan good news for India? That's the subject tonight. My guests are Pakistan's former High Commissioner to India, Ashraf Jahangir Kazi, Congress MP and former Minister Mani Shankar Iyer, Professor Emeritus from Punjab University, Hassan Askari Rizvi, and former Secretary in the MEA and former Ambassador to Iran, K.C. Singh. Mr. K.C. Singh, let's start with the sense of belief in India that Nawaz Sharif becoming Prime Minister with a comfortable, easy win, although he's still a few seats short of an outright victory, is in fact good news for India, that this man has the capacity to go back to 1999 when he was turfed out of power and restore relations to that trajectory that they'd reached when Mr. Vajpayee and he together signed the Lahore Declaration. Do you subscribe to that euphoria and goodwill, or are you skeptical? Let me out two more, the re two more reasons why we think uh, it's a positive. One is he had a problem with the Pakistani military, uh, which threw him out, exiled him, and that's always a defining thing. What's going to be the equation between the head of government and the army? Because our problem has always been with the elements of that army. And second is that he is uh, the president of the party. Last time there was Zardari, there was Gilani, there was somebody else. You didn't know whom to deal with. Uh, he is the president of the party, and Benazir had won the election and had been assassinated. Here is a man who's won the election. He is the man in charge. He controls the party. He controls the government. So these are the positives. On the other side, caution is always called for, not because we doubt his intentions, but because last time around his handling of the army was not very deft. He first fired uh, uh, a general Karamat, and then he picked up a quarrel with Musharraf. Then he settled it very badly. Uh, then he overran the courts. Uh, his hordes went and overran the High Court or Supreme Court. So he has an autocratic streak. And today the situation is much more complicated than it was in 99. He didn't have a Western front. Taliban were running Afghanistan. Now he has two fronts, US, Taliban, various other things to deal with. So if I understand you correctly, and I'm simplifying it for the audience, the reason why you think this is a positive situation for India is A, because you have a more mature man in Nawaz Sharif, B, Unlike the regime he replaces, he is the outright head of it. He is the president. There's Absolutely. no split mandate. Mm -hmm. And C, you believe he's learned lessons from the experience he's been through with the army and so will be better able to handle any opposition they throw in his way. That's right. Okay, let's switch across to Pakistan. Ashraf Ghazi, in the interview that Nawaz Sharif gave Devil's Advocate on Monday, which was in a very real sense his most detailed comment on relations with India, Nawaz Sharif said that improving relations with India would be one of his main priorities and that he intends to start from where he and Mr. Vajpayee were interrupted in 1999 when you, in fact, was Pakistan's High Commissioner in Delhi. Do you believe that that is Mr. Nawaz Sharif's real position or is he simply saying things that he believes would be pleasing to Indian ears to hear? I believe, Karan, that he is uh, sincere in what he is saying and last time uh, he also meant what he was saying uh, but not only were there other factors that came in the way uh, but it uh, would be fair to say that the quality of leadership that was uh, necessary in order to sustain those commitments in the face of opposition may have been lacking. I think he might have learnt a lot from uh, his subsequent experience. Uh, in order to uh, display the kind of leadership that is essential in order to move forward. Okay. One of the problems, of course, he will face is uh, uh, with regard to reciprocity. If he takes uh, risks with regard to uh, relations with India, at least what are seen as risks in the eyes of Pakistani public opinion, there would need to be a perception that India is also okay. similarly reciprocating these initiatives. Let, 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 let me stop you there. Let's come to that in a moment's time because the Indian response, which I accept is critical, is another stage that I want to go to in a moment's time. Let me first, at the moment, raise questions about Mr. Nawaz Sharif. Hassan Askari Rizvi, the critical test is will the army or the establishment or the deep state, as it's sometimes called, permit Nawaz Sharif to significantly improve relations and that means 
Will they permit him to control India policy? Well, I think you are talking of two different things. One is controlling India policy and improvement of relations with India. I think uh, over the last couple of years, it is very clear that the military uh, is in favor of improvement of relations with India because military feels greater uh, security pressure in Pakistani tribal areas and on the Pakistan-Afghan border. So they want to improve relations. At this stage, the relationship is at, at a level which is very low. Therefore, there is a need to improve relations and uh, improve environment. Then comes the stage of resolving the disputes and here at that stage uh, there may be more consultation or there may be difference of opinion but not at this stage okay. improvement of relation is on the uh, on the on the need of uh, both sides that is uh, the civil leadership as okay. well as the military leadership in pakistan manishankar ayer there was very interesting neat distinction made there by hassan askari rizri between improving relations with india and who controls the policy of India. The point that I want to put to you is a little different. Dr. Manmohan Singh, who watched the interviews with Nawaz Sharif, proceeded then to invite him. Tonight, in fact, Mr. Nawaz Sharif has formally invited Dr. Manmohan Singh to come to Pakistan to attend his inauguration. Are the two of them, by these reciprocal invitations, showing to the world, and more importantly to their own countries, that they both share this determination or are both of them jumping the gun as critics in both countries are suggesting? Which do you think it is? I think it's the third one. They're showing it to each other, that they are keen, they are interested. And uh, I, I personally don't think 1999 is very relevant to the Nawaz Sharif of 2013 because there have been so many improvements in objective conditions in India-Pakistan relations that I think Nawaz Sharif is going to reflect the Pakistan of 2013, which is much better disposed towards India than was the case earlier. And uh, it is in these circumstances that I think the signaling they've done to each other, the two heads of government, is a very good thing. Okay. And I hope they build on it. Let's then, Casey Singh, come to some of the key promises that Nawaz Sharif made in that interview to Devil's Advocate, which has excited Indian public opinion. First, he said he would not let Pakistani soil be used for any designs against India. Second, Hafiz Saeed's uh, hate speeches would be curbed. And third, the LET would be restrained. But can he actually deliver? Uh, well, what I noticed, you had to really push him on those. He was giving very general replies and you had to make him specific after quite a bit of goading. Uh, in a sense, it's easier for him if he wants to do it because he's the master of Punjab. His brother runs Punjab. Zardari didn't run Punjab. Uh, so therefore, Punjab is with them. Uh, and so that you're is, saying he has the capacity, but what you're questioning is the willingness. The willingness because I remember, I must tell you, when Vajpayee had gone there, the Lahore bus, I was there, I was then the spokesman. Let me quickly... But that's 1999. No, no, Let's not go back to history. But he has gone back. Nawaz Sharif goes back. It's not for us to decide. He says, I'll begin where I ended. Except that that was an indication of intent rather than in terms no, of... No, I just want to give you an example of how he plays both sides. Uh, the Jamaat people were demonstrating in the streets of Lahore. They started stoning cars and Vajpayee's movement to the Lahore fort for dinner was delayed. Now, subsequently, the IG police was overheard. One of our dinner guests overheard him tell his guys they were only supposed to make some noise not stone but, cars but, but, but so he that, plays both but, sides but is it relevant to say that he will continue to play both sides despite the fact that now he's speaking a different language and he's he communicating will, a different intent current he'll have to continue to play both sides till he gets something because you cannot dismount that horse okay let me bring up with you ashraf kazi a second promise or commitment that nawaz sharif made in that interview to devil's advocate he said he would investigate to see if allegations of ISI involvement in 2008 are true. In fact, he went one step further and said he would offer a joint commission for investigation and fully exchange information with India. How do you think the ISI and the army as a whole would respond to that sort of commitment? Well, I... I'm not going to speak on behalf of those organizations. I don't represent them. But I can tell you what is necessary. Of course, civilian control 
uh, has to be a principle which is uh, adhered to in practice. And if the newly elected Prime Minister has said that, then he needs to be judged by that particular commitment. And that commitment, in my view, is a very welcome commitment. And this is normal practice. Uh, if an incident takes place between two countries and all, it's very common for them to have a joint investigation into it. And uh, uh, because it represents the commitment which they've entered into generally can to I, prevent such things can I, can I from the soil of each other. Can so I this would be in this can I interrupt? Be Yes. You're, 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 you're undoubtedly and rightly so endorsing the commitment he's made. You're saying it's the right sort of commitment to make. But actually, skeptics in India ask, can he deliver on it? Given the fact that the army would be investigated in this instance, and the ISI in particular might be revealed to have played a nefarious role, can he deliver on that commitment? There will be practical difficulties, but a leader must be true to his word and go as far as he can. Now, it is you probably also have to be realistic to some extent what in uh, in uh, expecting uh, if he's going to push things beyond a certain extent with reference to uh, incidents which have taken place in the past, very serious incidents on which an investigation must take place. But if we see this in a zero-sum context, we could run into trouble. Okay. If we see this in a positive-sum um, uh, context, I think a very a, a lot can be done. Okay. And here is a man with a very large mandate and a man who has uh, uh, democratic commitments and is prioritizing relations with India, which are essential for our own uh, national interests. Uh, but they, those interests, uh, that commitment has to be reciprocated. I think he can do a lot in this respect without me going into great detail, okay. uh, which I cannot predict. Now, Hazan Asri Rizvi, you heard that there was a note of caution from the gentleman sitting on your right that one must respond to this commitment to investigate the ISI with a certain sense of realism. There's only so far Nawaz Sharif can go. The reason I mention that is because Nawaz Sharif in that Devil's Advocate interview made a second commitment and this time he made it without any prompting. He said he would hold a full inquiry into Kargil, into all the generals involved, not just General Musharraf. And then he added he would fully share the findings with India. Now, that commitment has already attracted adverse comment by your newspaper, The News. Do you think this would worry the army even more? Well, not at this stage. I think he has been uh, making quite uh, big uh, promises, and we'll wait and see how he proceeds and makes an effort to materialize what he has been saying for the last um, uh, couple of days. Uh, given the constraint of Pakistani politics, the dynamics of Pakistani politics, where civilian leadership have to recognize certain uh, ground uh, realities. However, I think India can uh, help him uh, if India wants to. That is, the relationship between India and Pakistan has been frozen since January. If those gestures which were to be implemented, that is for movement of people across border okay. um, are uh, revived i think that will facilitate that means that india is making gesture and that will strengthen uh, nawaz sharif's position but if stalemate continues in india and pakistan relationship i think then it may be difficult for nawaz sharif okay. to proceed on on any commitment manishankar I, there was one other commitment that in fact nawaz sharif made and that was to expedite the 2008 cases stuck in the uh, the Allah courts in rawalpindi for the last five years but as you've heard from both Ashraf Ghazi and Hassan Askari Rizvi, these commitments, whether you're talking about the ISI or Kargid inquiries or shutting up Hafiz Saeed and curbing the LET, do require some sort of reciprocal response from India so that Nawaz is not isolated in his own political environment. Will that reciprocal response from India be forthcoming? Or will Dr. Marmon Singh be constrained by domestic politics and perhaps by his own weakness? I have absolutely no doubt that India is not merely the passive end line receiver of what happens in India Park relations. If we are proactive in this matter, it's certainly going to help uh, Nawaz Sharif fulfill uh, what he said to you. And I think he meant what he said to you. But he's a realist, and we all have to be realists. It was not a, these were not commitments made by all of Pakistan to you. It was made by the man who's won a large mandate. And he needs to be helped. Okay. And I think we should 
not be fighting old and happy far off things in battles long ago. We should seize this opportunity, recognize that it's not just Nawaz Sharif speaking, but a new Pakistan that is speaking. Okay. And that we should avail of this opportunity to be proactive in promoting an uninterrupted and uninterruptible dialogue. Okay. And that way, miracles are around the corner. But if we are hesitant, if we lack the self-confidence to engage with Pakistan, then obviously our Pakistani interlocutors would find it that much more difficult to move forward. In other words, India needs to rise to the occasion that Nawaz Sharif has perhaps offered through that Devil's Advocate interview. Let's take a break and when we come back we'll turn to the question of Kashmir and also the critical issue of trade. All of that in a moment's time. See you after the break. Last one, is Nawaz Sharif's comfortable victory in Pakistan good news for India? Mr. Casey Singh, let's come to Kashmir. Nawaz Sharif in that interview to Devil's Advocate made it clear that his manifesto commitment to both the UN resolutions as well as to what was called the aspirations of the people of Kashmir for their inherent right to self-determination is simply old stated positions that he would be perfectly willing to sit across the table with India and move to new positions that they can converge on. What does that tell you about his position on Kashmir? I think he, he's accepting that in the 14 intervening years, a lot of work has been done because he did emphasize the back channel and the back channel has been going all through Musharraf's period and Zardari period. And they came very close to, and that's what Musharraf says, very close to a solution around the status quo. Um, which has not been shared by the Indian government with India, but Musharraf has given out different components of it. And this is a very old proposal. This is Galbraith in the first place, who had talked about it in 62, 63, that a solution based on status quo, both then cut their cloth to the size and accept it, and then they go and market it. He is probably in a position to market it in Pakistan today, but is the Indian government in a position to do it in India? That, of course, is a question that we can't even address today because he may be willing, but the Indian government might actually be unable because of its weaknesses to respond. Yeah, yeah. Ashraf Kazi, how do you view what Nawaz Sharif said about Kashmir? Has he shown flexibility that would be acceptable within Pakistan? Or is the Indian belief that Pakistan has a rigid position just out of date and mistaken and failing to understand how much our country has changed? I think uh, uh, the newly elected Prime Minister has reiterated what is a consensus position within Pakistan that uh, a resolution should be found within the framework of UN resolutions which were accepted by both countries and which, is, uh, which concentrates upon the inherent and inalienable rights of the Kashmiri people which have not yet been exercised. However, within that framework, the two countries should work towards a, uh, a uh, uh, settlement that both can uh, live with and that actually respects the human rights of the Kashmiri people. But can, can, uh, can, can, can I stop you? We, can, I, can, I, can I stop you? Are you therefore oh, saying well, that in fact mm -hmm. he is exercising and showing flexibility and that India needs to recognize that Pakistan is no longer rigid on Kashmir? That's the key issue I want you to address. I think absolutely because when we talk about the UN resolutions and our Indian friends cut us off and say well that's yesterday's talk and you've already uh, aborted the possibility of a productive di dialogue I think that's being unfair with with that basis okay. because the Indian basis also right now is that it is an inalienable part of the Indian Union and if we cut them off right there and say that's not the basis for productive dialogue then we don't go move forward we have our starting positions and I believe that we can work towards a settlement acceptable to all three parties all right. in our mind, which is of course India and Pakistan and above all the people of Kashmir, I, I, and then embody that resolution in a new set of UN resolutions which could replace not, the current not, set of let's resolutions. Not, let's, not, let's not go into the details. It's actually, let's not go into the details because that might be jumping ahead of ourselves. It was the reflection that Pakistan's not rigid that I wanted you to confirm because that is in a sense what lay behind 
Mr. Nawaz Sharif saying that he can move towards a new convergence with India. The other thing Hassan Askari Rizvi that Mr. Nawaz Sharif spoke about was the possibility of Indian entrepreneurs investing in Pakistani power plants. Now, can that sort of investment actually happen? Or do you share Ahmed Rashid's concern, and I'm quoting him now, that General Kayani balks at the idea of Indian factories and investment taking root in Pakistan? A quick answer, please. I think if the relationship improves between uh, the two countries, economic ties as well as uh, a human being a relationship across the border, I think the idea of uh, investment in Pakistan uh, will not be averse to the business community because the different chambers in Pakistan are not opposed to Indian investment in Pakistan, but that is only possible when the relationship improves from present to stalemated okay. uh, position and the military is not going to oppose that perhaps they may not like Indian investment in security related uh, industry but in other commercial industry there is not going to be an objection. Manish Akaraya, that interview was ended with Nawaz Shri speaking in Punjabi to the Indian people and he said let's hold hands together. Let's remember the affinities we share in common and let's go into the future almost, as he put it, hand in hand. Was that just Punjabi rhetoric or do you believe it? It's the one thing that gives me some cause for concern because Nawaz Sharif seems to think that India is East Punjab. There's much more to India and if I may have the gumption to say so, there's much more to Pakistan as well. Okay. The relationship has to be between both countries. I think he's said all the right things in his interview with you. I'm not sure that he's being heard properly here in India, but I do hope that we will avail of the opportunities okay. and not balk at what could be some doubts and suspicions. If we do engage with Pakistan, we might find a solution. All if right. we don't engage with Pakistan, we'll never find a solution. Manish Shankar, I, I let those wise words be the last words tonight. My thanks to all four of my guests for joining me. Goodbye. Good night.